Hello and welcome back to this Dampfile Idealistic Crusade. This is another Blu-ray review of a Warner Archive title and one that I was really just beyond excited for because it was actually a title announced by Shout Factory uh, but that unfortunately got canceled before the disc was ever released. Uh, they claimed due to low sales on the particular titles they'd already done of this group of films that are so incredibly important, uh, not just to film history, but to the horror genre. And so Warner Archive seemingly is now picking up the baton and releasing uh, hopefully more titles of the classic Val Luton psychological horrors of the 1940s, uh, which are the, you know, I guess you could generally refer to them as I do as the Luton 9 or the 9B horror films that he produced in his RKO unit in the 1940s, starting with 1942's Cat People and culminating on 1946's Bedlam. And these films have been released, uh, to the most part, There are most of them are available now on Blu-ray, thankfully. Uh, primarily, Cat People is available from Criterion, and then uh, several others are available through Shout Factory, but uh, they seemingly stopped after their other releases. So it's really fantastic that Warner Archive stepped up to release the eighth of the horror films, Isle of the Dead from 1945. This is the second of the final three films that all starred Boris Karloff after he signed a new deal at RKO and they paired him with the Val Luton Horror Unit. Uh, originally, this film was going to be the first film uh, of their collaboration, but uh, Karloff had sustained many, many back problems over the years, and that got exacerbated after uh, his time with Universal. He'd gone back to Universal for a brief period after coming back to Hollywood. He had really injured himself further on House of Frankenstein, particularly the ending uh, scene in the quicksand, where they did not use a lot of stunt doubles, and it actually is Karloff in that scene. Uh, so he started shooting this film, and then had to they had to stop the production due to Karloff requiring uh, really intensive back surgery and a long recovery process. So by the time they could come back and finish this film, uh, they had actually shot, completed, and finished uh, the entirety of The Body Snatcher, and then RKO decided to release Body Snatcher first. Uh, so that's why Body Snatcher is the first released uh, Karloff uh, Luton film of the three that he did with Val Luton. So Isle of the Dead wound up coming out uh, second of the three, and the third, of course, was Bedlam. Uh, and in the process, they did have to do some reworking of the script and things. So... Of the nine Luton horror films from a story perspective, this is perhaps maybe, I guess you could consider it one of the, the weakest because of that production trouble, which is understandable. But just like with the other Luton films, that does not keep it from being an absolute masterpiece in terms of just a, a, a pervasive feeling of doom and a, a real poetry of death. And, of course, it is inspired by the Arnold Bachlin painting of the same name, the famous Isle of the Dead painting, which Val Luton had been fascinated with ever since he was a child. He used to, apparently, uh, his grandmother had it on, uh, or I should say, his aunt had it on her wall, and he would just stare at it for hours on end. Uh, and so it haunted him his entire life. So the idea of basing an entire film, particularly a B film, a B horror film, an RKO, on a painting... Uh, is definitely not something that everybody was going to do. And it was definitely something that Luton really had to fight tooth and nail to get past the front office, who were not always, uh, you know, pleased with his, shall we say, artier ideas. The film was written primarily by Ardell Ray, who also wrote on I Walked with the Zombie and The Leopard Man. But uh, as any Luton fan knows, uh, Luton would most often, well, practically every time, uh, do the final draft of the screenplay himself and rewrite it and not take credit for it. He did once or twice when he was forced to, but he would use a pen name. Uh, there's also uh, apparently some contributions from another writer, but again, they did have to do some uh, pretty a pretty decent amount of rewriting as far as I, I've been able to tell because, of course, they did have to stop the production and basically kind of come back and rework it a bit. This film was directed by Mark Robeson, who directed the most of the Luton Nine, and he started out as uh, in the editing department and rose up through the ranks, was promoted from within by Luton. And uh, this film, again, while the story is maybe a bit on the weaker side. 
and it's not completely filled with the shock horror elements that you come to expect from Luton, primarily the uh, Luton buses, which are the device used to shock and surprise the audience. Uh, and since it first was used in Cat People, and uh, notably in the Central Park scene where uh, the uh, heroine character of Alice is scared by what is seemingly a cat creature, but it turns into the hissing air brakes of a bus. Uh, so that being so successful, the, the whole terminal became known as the Luton bus. Uh, even though this film is, is perhaps light on those, there are some in there, but it does genuinely build to the most dramatic scare sequence in the entirety of the Luton canon. Uh, Martin Scorsese includes this on his uh, scariest films of all time, and really with good reason, because the, the sense of mortal dread is built right into the storyline, which, again, is very atypical of, again, a, this is a B-horror film from RKO from 1945, and it's set in the, uh, I believe it's, if I'm remembering correctly, the terminology, it's set in the Balkan Wars of Greece, so it's technically a period film of sorts, because that took place in about 1912 or so, uh, but Karloff plays a, a Greek general who is so ludicrously tied to his uh, sense of duty that they call him the watchdog. And the film literally begins with him uh, not just dressing down another in his army who was, you know, five minutes late with his contingent to the battle, which they won, of course, uh, but you literally see the man being stripped of his command, all the insignia stripped off his uniform, and he's handed a gun to execute himself, which he does. Uh, and Karloff is unwavering. Uh, Karloff in this film, as in the other two Luton films, is absolutely majestic. You can't take your eyes off of him. And the whole notion that everybody likes to bring up when discussing Karloff's career, particularly later on when he was in so many things that were beneath his talents, you can really tell when he is engaged on screen. And in the three Luton films, you know, most notably in the Body Snatcher, but it's here as well uh, in his performance as General Ferides. He is absolutely majestic. And again, you wouldn't know <laughs> that they started shooting the film and then his back practically gave out. And then he had to have really uh, invasive back surgery and then have to recuperate for months on end. And then they went and shot the Body Snatcher before they could even come back to finish Isle of the Dead. So unfortunately, that meant the production costs were, uh, you know, definitely a bit higher than the usual Luton budget. So uh, its profit margins were not, you know, very good like the other Luton films. But again, they did have that hurdle to get over. So that's its sort of place in the history of the nine Luton horror films at RKO. So it is the penultimate one. Uh, again, the sense of mortal dread and the fact that it's really funny that this is coming out now. Uh, perhaps Warner Archive has a has a sense of humor because, of course, the film deals with a form of plague that uh, invades the island. That was a former cemetery that the characters wind up on, and they have to uh, quarantine themselves. <laughs> and there are points where there are characters where wearing face masks, and so uh, this coming out in the middle of the pandemic, it's really the perfect title from the classic era of Hollywood to, uh, you know, that deals with some of these same ideas and trying to practice social distancing <laughs> and things like that. Um, so again, it is, it is kind of funny in a way to be looking at this particular film right now. Now, getting on to the disc itself and the transfer, it is advertised as being a brand new 4K scan from original surviving negative nitrate elements. So this is one of the Luton films where they were actually able to scan the negative. Uh, not all of the scans so far, which have all been sourced by Warner Brothers, uh, even on the Shout Factory releases, but uh, they haven't always had the negative to work from. Sometimes it's an inner positive or a protection element. So here we actually have apparently negative to work from, which is fantastic. And the image on here oh my word <laughs> the the imagery of the Luton films is is part of their magic and particularly the the deepness of of the deep black shadows and this film in particular particularly that that final uh final sequence on the island where everything is in complete darkness is just uh, again bone chilling uh and uh, there are elements of pose the premature burial as well which is a whole other layer of horror but um, this transfer is absolutely first rate. I could not take my jaw off the floor. And particularly since the Luton films, uh, before these new scans were coming out, uh, they have really kind of suffered because the transfers actually date back quite a ways, which 
most people are aware of the DVD releases, which are all in these nice double features uh, placed on the same disc because, of course, these films were B films. They're uh, about an hour and 15 minutes for the most part, so you can fit them onto a single disc. But uh, the transfers on some were better than others, but unfortunately, most of them are all kind of dated. These DVDs are from 2005 and are unfortunately now out of print. Uh, some have been reprinted by the Warner Archive as MOD discs, but now they're coming out uh, very slowly. They've been coming out one at a time, but now it looks like Warner Archive might take over and hopefully do the rest of them. But uh, these DVDs, for the most part, their masters actually date back even further, actually 10 years earlier, I should say, to the Val Luton Laserdisc collection I have here. This is from 1995. Uh, this was done by Image and also with Turner Home Entertainment, of course, because these films are under the Warner Home Library. But uh, these were all, you know, slightly spiffed up. Most had come out on disc and tape before, uh, but these all had, uh, you know, PCM mono soundtracks. They were a bit, again, cleaned up just a little bit over what had come out before. But this was the first time that all the films were packaged together with some semblance of, of special extra materials. There's a nice booklet write-up essay as well. Uh, but again, most of these transfers are, are what turned up on the 2005 DVDs. And Isle of the, Isle of the Dead in particular uh, really was you know, showing its age transfer-wise. And the, the biggest thing you notice in these older transfers, especially on the Luton films, where the black level is so key and important, and the contrast between the dark shadows and the light of the interiors, because of course, uh, the Luton films are all about the psychological fear of the unknown and definitely play on what lurks in the shadows and what you don't see. So it's very important to have that imagery preserved. And unfortunately, on these older transfers, uh, you're you're really seeing something more akin to what you would have seen on a worn print or something, because, of course, the shadows are not very uh, as deep as they could be because you're looking at something that is not, you know, fully restored or from original negative source. So, for this Blu-ray to actually be coming from an, a negative source makes it even more important. Uh, so the scan and the transfer is absolutely staggering. It is worth the price of the disc just for the picture restoration alone. Uh, the audio is presented in lossless HDMA. It is mono. Uh, it really sounds lovely. It does sound like they did do a bit of cleanup over what is on the DVD and Laserdisc, so it does sound improved there, which was really nice because, of course, the Luton films are also very important for their sound design. Uh, probably the most uh, noticeable, the most famous, the most memorable usage of sound in this film is uh, in the premature burial sequence where uh, we see the coffin inside the crypt in the darkness, and then we start to hear just the tiniest drip of water coming from the cave roof as it drips onto the, the top of the nailed down wood box. And you just hear it dripping very, very slowly as the, as the camera starts to track out. And then you hear the little bits of the, the very malevolent sounding wind coming through the trees on the Isle of the Dead. Uh, so sound is very key and important to the Luton film. So I was very happy that that was addressed as well. In terms of extras, we do get an extra on here, which again is uncommon for Warner Archive. Usually they're just doing the brand new transfer and are bringing over any DVD extras. This has a commentary with Steve Haberman, who, you know, if you're into classic horror on disc, you've most likely encountered him in a featurette or one of his commentary tracks on other films. He's also done some of the other Luton titles as well. It's a really nice track and again, really fantastic. We're getting new extras for a Luton title. Uh, the DVD did not have a commentary for this film. It had some commentaries. For example, uh, the one on this disc is Tom Weaver's track for Bedlam, which is one of the best commentary tracks you'll ever hear in your life. So uh, it was really great to get another Luton commentary track and an actual extra on a Warner Archive release, which again, they don't do all the time, so that kind of makes it a bit more special for collectors and film nerds like myself because it's them kind of going the extra mile outside their usual uh, wheelhouse of just doing brand new transfers. They use original poster art, which looks really fantastic on here, and they've got the rather simple but very effective classy looking uh, design on the rear cover with original stills and you get the credit for the extra. It also includes an original trailer 
uh, which uh, had not been discovered on disc before this point. Uh, it does have Spanish subtitles that are hard-coded into it, so apparently that was uh, the only trailer source they could find. And that is scanned in and presented in HD as well, which is really cool because you can see, how, of course, how they advertise the film. And every once in a while, you might see a little bit of extra footage uh, in the takes of a trailer in, in, in terms of uh, comparing to the final edit of the film itself. So that was a real treat to see in HD. And again, and it's amazing we even have it because the only copy they could find had hard-coded Spanish subtitles on it. Uh, but they're very small, and it's just really cool that Warner Archive went that to those extra lengths to give us that, uh, even though it is a subtitled trailer. And then we get the wonderful art on the disc label itself. So this really is another one of the best discs of the year so far, one of the best catalog releases, one of the most important really, because again, Shout Factory announced they were going to do Isle of the Dead, even made a cover art mock-up, and then unfortunately canceled it. So I believe maybe the Haberman commentary was prepared for that, and then th thankfully Warner Archive was able to secure the rights for that and put it on the uh, archive release. So that leaves a handful of other Luton titles uh, that are not available on Blu-ray yet. And some of them are the big ones. Uh, like we're still missing I Walked With a Zombie, uh, still missing The Seventh Victim, which is uh, criminally undervalued, uh, as are all the Luton films. We're still missing The Ghost Ship, which is a fantastic film. And, of course, that film was unavailable for many decades due to uh, some unfair litigation that had happened. Uh, so really, the, the Laserdisc set was the first time you could really see that on home video. Uh, so that should result in a really stunning disc as well. So here's hoping Warner Archive can follow with the rest of the Luton titles we don't have in HD yet. And again, these are all new scans that have been uh, done by Warner MPI over the past few years and uh, licensed out to other labels. There have been some rumors that maybe Criterion had, has the rights to I Walked With a Zombie and they just haven't done it yet. Uh, it it kind of sucked that they came in and they cherry-picked you know, Cat People being the most famous Luton film a number of years ago put that out on Blu-ray, and then didn't do any more when it's really best to keep these films together. That's why the Laserdisc and DVD box sets were so good, uh, because when you watch one of these, you really want to watch them all. I watch them all in order every October. Uh, they are essential for Halloween viewing and classic horror viewing. Uh, if you've never seen any of these films, I cannot recommend them highly enough. Uh, once, once you understand what they're trying to do, and what Val Luton's aims were, and just how much of himself he personally invested into what really were supposed to be cheap B programmers that tried to compete with the ever-increasing success of the monster matches of 40s universal horror films. These are absolute works of art, uh, even though some are maybe a bit stronger than others. Uh, they all have an inescapable style and really a sense of depth that, to me, makes them feel like cinematic poetry. I think that's the best way to describe these. And there's a famous line where, uh, you know, the, that uh, Luton was told, no messages in these films, whatever you do, the front office doesn't want messages. And Luton apparently replied that uh, there is a message in these horror films, and the message is that death is good. So that, that anecdote uh, sums, summarizes these films uh, perfectly. And again, all nine are absolute masterpieces, which really makes this extra special to me because, uh, you know, I, I watch these films every year. And uh, with practically all of them, I find it very difficult to uh, not come away with a teary eye at the end. And of course, I watched Isle of the Dead again, beautiful restoration, lovely commentary, and I did get choked up at the end. I always do. Uh, these, these films are great works of art. They are not hampered by being uh, B-horror films from RKO in the 1940s, and uh, it's you know, still one of, the, one of the great shames of Hollywood that Luton was not as respected as he should have been within his lifetime. So it's amazing these films have been rediscovered over the years and are you know, championed within classic horror circles and critical circles, and even more amazing that we're getting these beautiful restorations, which, again, uh, are, are so vital to getting across the, 
the, the soul of these films because it is tied into the imagery and the tone and the sound and the imagery in particular in getting these new scans out there with you know properly restored black levels and properly restored contrast just helps to further uh, not just the shock sequences and the scare sequences but the overall artistry of these films which again are all masterpieces so this is Warner Archive's release of Isle of the Dead on Blu-ray, an absolute must-own. Even if even if you've never seen any of the Luton films before, uh, you know maybe this isn't exactly the best place to start if you're coming in cold. I always tell people to start with Cat People, which again is available from Criterion on Blu-ray, or you can still get it uh, from the Warner Archive on DVD. But I would just recommend watch all nine of the Luton horror films. They are far ahead of their time so far ahead of their time it really hurts and they are all masterpieces and all works of art so this is one of the best blu-rays of the year so far an absolute treasure and uh just one i really wanted to review and uh i was just so excited as soon as it got announced because again i was just absolutely gutted that it was uh canceled by shop factory originally so that does it for this particular review. Uh, again, just a simple review of, of the film, not uh, on disc, not, not getting into uh, all of its uh, majesty and, and doing a full analysis of it because then we'd be here for, you know, three hours. Uh, but anyway, uh, beautiful Blu-ray and absolutely stellar job by the Warner Archive once again. So thank you so very much for watching, and uh, if you've already picked up this release, definitely comment below what you think about it and how it compares to the older editions on DVD and Laserdisc. And uh, you know, if you'd like to see the other Luton titles get a Blu-ray release, which you know I'm sure we all do, uh, that way we can finally have the Luton 9 in HD. So thank you so very much for watching, and keep physical media alive.